Hello everyone, uh, welcome to ELI, the place where you get your daily dose of inspiration for entrepreneurship. And today we have with us Mr. Rajesh Seth, who is the co-founder of Sahib Bandhu, uh, which provides hassle-free gold loans uh, to consumers. Uh, hi, Mr. Rajesh, welcome to ELI. Hi, Priya. Uh, pleasure uh, to uh, get this opportunity. Uh, thanks for uh, choosing us. Uh, so uh, to start with, uh, uh, I would request you to introduce yourself to our audience and introduce in a way uh, that uh, we would love to know about your background, where you were born and brought up, and how different events in your life uh, uh, in your life has uh, you know made you choose the path of entrepreneurship. How did you arrive here? Okay, uh, so it's been an interesting journey. So I'll start with my uh, background, um, uh, family. Uh, um, belong to a jewelry associated family. The surname Shet uh, is a Goan origin surname. We all migrated from Goa to coastal Karnataka during Portuguese era. Uh, we Konkani speaking family, but um, none of my immediate family members in my family are jewelers, but extended family are all from jewelry background. But I never thought uh, at some stage uh, in my professional life uh, I'll end up uh, uh, having to use the family profession uh, as part of our business journey. Um, my uh, dad um, is an engineer. Uh, uh, he served uh, Karnataka Electricity Board uh, at various levels and ended up in a senior position. He retired and uh, lives out of uh, Mangalore. Uh, three uh, children. Uh, I'm the eldest of the siblings. Uh, all are engineers. So. Uh, I grew up um, uh, in and around Karnataka. Um, um, dad was a transferable job, being a tough uh, official. So it's been every one or two years, we've always been moving. So we never used to settle in a place, but uh, that came as a blessing in disguise, handy. You had to always constantly adopt to new conditions right from childhood, young. So mm -hmm. I had, up till 12th, I had eight places, eight schools to shift. And thereafter, um, I did my engineering from um, Karnataka University, SDM College of Engineering, Dharwad. Uh, did my engineering in DNC. And then um, I started my career in IT, IT services industry for about um, um, 11 to 12 years. Uh, Manipal uh, Group uh, was uh, one of the client for the company. My first job, Minicoms. I was stationed in Manipal as a vendor. Mm -hmm. That's how my connect to Manipal happened. And thereafter, I grew uh, in IT and IT services. Um, that became a strength, mainly catering to BFSI vertical. So banking uh, was always there um, uh, throughout my career as a link, either in a B2B or a B2C. Uh, mm -hmm. So always banking was uh, the connect that I had. And there, um, after I uh, joined the Manipal group uh, in uh, 2005 uh, and then within the group uh, I've had an interesting um, career uh, for about um, 15 years wherein uh, um, I got to learn new lines of businesses I got to create new line of businesses so I would say it's been an exciting journey where every three years I've handled something new mm. I've created something new and then grew it, ran it, and then handed it over to someone and then tried to create something new from the scratch. That's been my um, professional journey and that led to the entrepreneurship, wherein I got opportunity and I like trying out new things, unknown territories. That's been my strength. Coming to my own immediate family, um, my wife, Gayatri, and uh, two kids, son is... Um, doing his uh, pursuing his engineering the final year uh, and, and our daughter is a uh, 10 year old um, son is into music art writing and then engineering wife is into music and then i love music but i don't play but i listen um, and uh, uh, i love fitness uh, from childhood been always not into cricket but other sports tennis mm -hmm. Uh, badminton, table tennis, and now in the recent years, I'm into running. I love running half marathons, keep myself fit, energetic. Uh, that's about me, my personal uh, background journey. It's mm. been interesting uh, 
satisfying i love challenges that's the brief about me got it uh tell us a bit about uh, sai bandhu uh, i think it's one of the recent entrants uh, into the gold loan space which is pretty crowded uh, with giants like uh, the big names uh, uh, in the industry uh, so how what was the hypothesis behind uh, sai bandhu why did you enter this particular space uh, what's the market like with all these players is there a, a vacant market out there and uh, what are the pain points that are not being addressed by the uh, giants we have okay so um i'll put it this way um um uh, the gold loan market is quite large unaddressed so there is always people think it is saturated well addressed well covered no this market is huge and under penetrated from a service delivery point of view this huge opportunity for innovation and technology um so let me come to what we do in sai bandhu sure uh, sai bandhu is an aggregator platform uh like any other industry if you have to uh, relate so in any other aggregator platform you have consumers or customers on the one side who are looking for certain service or product so for us people consumers who look for gold loan as a need or any financial need it can be prior to gold loan also and then whether gold loan could be option for them that's how we position ourselves we identify the financial need whether gold loan could be a requirement and if it is gold loan then what are the various product and services within gold loan that we can uh, give them by understanding their need uh, there are a lot of products within gold loan people are not aware uh, it's not ready one product that can fit everybody's need and then we try to understand their need and try to give the right product from our book okay, what we call as sahi max sahi delight and sahi flexi these are the three broad categories that we have created meeting consumers needs and on the other side we have uh, banking partners uh, who can fulfill these needs and each of these banking partners there are multiple banking partners that we have like any other aggregator uh, so we try to match the right product right need of the customer with the right banking partner that we have we give them multiple choices we make it very transparent trust uh, is the utmost uh, 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 thing here because uh, gold is a valuable asset more than financial uh, asset it is also a emotional asset for customers so we win their trust we by being very transparent give them the right advice as the name suggests sahi bandhu we want to be the true partner true guide advisor to the customer so this is done by using our platform where technology is used to make it very very seamless uh, and very transparent so we have multiple banks on one side and customers on the other side uh, and then uh, we are very clear in our business model uh, um, the customer space for the loan to the bank through which the loan is availed they don't have to pay two sides that they don't pay to us as well as to bank okay mm-hmm. so we are very very transparent in being uh, that's one differentiator compared to others usually in an aggregator you try to take from both sides uh but when it comes to especially financial needs the consumer also looks uh if i work directly with a end service provider versus going through an aggregator what is the difference for me am i paying or being charged more then there is always a trust deficit in terms of am i getting the right product we've kept it very very neutral from that angle we also don't intend to book any loans in our books uh, as an aggregator our job is to make the right fitment from both sides that's the differentiator another key differentiator is gold loan uh, is not a urban requirement it is pan india and more of the gold holding in india is in rural semi urban um, so the demand also is in semi urban rural and uh, it's a classic inverted pyramid the highest demand is there but the least penetration from banking or the formal banking i would say people go to shadow banking unorganized segment and they end up in uh, uh, high uh, interest rate regimes and uh, finally debt traps so how do we help people to come to formal banking is one of the key themes for us that we are trying to solve so this is the overall model platform that uh, we have built uh, we are the largest in the country now 
from a monthly loan disbursement point of view with a clear focus uh, uh, in tier 3 4 rural semi urban unlike but we are also present in tier 1 and 2 we pan india across all the states um, and created this model both uh, uh, online as well as off- offline what we call it as a digital model where mm-hmm. we have physical leg also built in and we also have digital leg that is built in to bring in both the sides together through our platform that's the model got you so uh, i understand the uh, platform started in uh, 2022 january of 22 and uh, now it's been uh, about one and a half year but uh, we have grown significantly uh, like we have more than 100 employees now to give a perspective uh, so tell us what what's the secret sauce how how you are growing so fast uh, there must be something right that you must be doing um one small correction we are close to uh, 900 people now wow okay so uh, uh, january we were at about 200 last january 22 we were 200 now uh, we have grown significantly um i would say um uh, the secret sauce for our growth is one uh, the market is huge and it is unaddressed okay so we went in identifying uh, uh, the problem and then um, wanted to be the quickest and the fastest to reach uh, length and breadth of the country and uh, we have a great team i would say the success of our uh, uh, business uh, venture goes to the team that we have built committed team and um, uh with the uh, right product right uh, partner banks that we have uh, trust and transparency has been our hallmark uh, and in the, that's the key to our success i would say okay so uh you mentioned the problem uh, statement that uh, most of the uh, gold loan entities are present in urban but uh, indian uh, gold market is in rural that is where most of the gold sir and that's where a lot of demand is so problem is pretty straight forward but how do you solve it why cannot the bigger giant uh, like the big names uh, uh, how are they are not able to solve but you are able to be uh, there on the ground uh, in tier 3 tier 4 cities uh, so uh, even now uh, 70% of our uh, business is coming from uh, um uh, semi uh, urban and rural even now so there is a market market always existed so if you look at uh, overall gold loan uh, uh, market it is uh, almost um, 60 40 60% is in um, uh, unorganized and 40% is in organized so when i say organized that is banks and nbfcs constitute 40% 60% is unorganized that is money lenders pawn brokers or small time financers which are unregulated entities so um one if uh, they have to be brought into organized segment you have to have a service delivery network like uh, for example if i am speaking about our uh, business we need bank partners through whom the loans will have to be provided hmm. is a bank network available throughout the country yes but is there a gold loan enable the bank branch network throughout the country no so mm-hmm. that's one gap that is there so there is a distance factor that is there uh, it's not fully covered so somebody has to bring in that customer to a bank by building the trust many of the times what happens is um, uh, the gold loan requirement is such that it is all urgent and emergency mm-hmm. they will look for uh, who can give them maximum out of that asset uh, that's only in unorganized that they can get but then it is coming at a cost there is no right advice that is available and from a banking sector if you see a, any bank branch has um, 20 different products assets and liabilities to sell correct they will look for a product uh, which is a high value and a high tenure so that their aum books can be built so gold loan is typically a low ticket and low tenure so mm. the effort that is required for a bank 
or a bank employee or a staff to go out and build this business is much more from the returns perspective. So they will always expect um, some intermediary like us who can bring the traffic. And um, if you look at uh, the NBFCs, they try to solve the problem of uh, money lenders uh, uh, exploiting the end customers by giving loans uh, at a reasonable rate better than the money lenders. But compared to banks, it is still higher. So NBFC solve the problem of uh, still address the need of immediate, but at a slightly higher rate. Banks could give it at a very low competitive rate for the customer from a consumer's point of view, they'll save a lot of money, but they mm. could never solve the problem of that quick and uh, 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 in a uh, way that it meets the end customer's requirement. Even now, customers feel banks make you fill all the forms. Will I get the loan in one hour or will it take half a day? If manager is not there, will I get? Will I be eligible for the loan? There are a lot of um, misconceptions uh, that are there in customers' mind. So they end up not going to bank. Mm. So we are trying to solve that by bringing technology where I will do all the pre loan journey using my app, where I will assess the customer's need, everything that a bank needs and digitally provide that to the bank even before the customer goes to the bank. Mm -hmm. And then use bank's capital where they are very good at and give the best rate of interest to the customer so that he or she can save money. And then take the customer to a bank and get the loan dispersed in the least amount of time in less than one hour. So mm -hmm. uh, gold again is very, very touchy subject. No one wants to pledge. No one wants to be seen as pledging the gold. Still there is social stigma. People even tell now, uh, but that is slowly changing. The mindset in urban is already changed. It's my gold. Um, uh, why should I care about somebody? Uh, instead of gold being sitting idle at home, let me keep it at bank and uh, take a, an OD or a facility against it. But in rural still, that social stigma attached. So even to ask how much loan will I get for this gold? Which product? So they do not want to be seen and then they don't know whether the bank will be receptive to all this. So we have created the platform by which our Saibandh officers can provide all this information. What I spoke about 900 people out of that, 800 are feet on street. We mm -hmm. have people in about 600 locations, 800 people who carry Saibandh app and then they provide the right answers uh, for customer. That's our differentiation where... Uh, I'll give the right advice to customer and take it to the right bank and give them the best uh, loan product that is possible. Got you. Take us to the days when uh, you started Saibund, the first day. So what were the uh, initial few things that you did to start this venture? Did you uh, start uh, building a tech platform or did you start integrating with banks as a step one or uh, how, how did you go about it? Okay, so interesting question. So it's always um, um, a uh, difficult decision uh, for any um, organization or someone starting something new, new idea. So should you start everything once the tech stack is created and it may take more than a year for you to build that. Till then, um, how will you keep the team motivated? At the same time, if there are opportunities outside, then are you going to uh, lose that opportunity? Mm -hmm. Fortunately for us, the nature of business is such that um, this business can, uh, requires um, technology as an enabler, but there is a lot of offline or a physical leg needed. Mm -hmm. And there also um, a lot of uh, uh, groundwork, preparatory work had to be created in terms of which all location we should be present. Are you going to open... Um, your own brick and mortar branch or are you going to have a virtual office so that you will have your people. So um, we took a call that it has to be a, uh, a combination of both. So we built a tech stack that is uh, minimum that will be needed uh, for our day-to-day uh, -day operations and for us to integrate with bank. But uh, we didn't take the consumer journey and the full stack that we wish to establish. That would take one year. So um, uh, we went ahead, got the partnership agreements done with partner banks, and then um, uh, built both tech stack in parallel and growth in physical 
and the model that we had hybrid what we call so uh, that really helped us uh, to scale up even during this tech journey so uh, we quickly could uh, ramp up and um, scale up and then now we have become uh, number one in terms of monthly disbursement uh, uh, in gold on we don't have any physical branches as such that's the model from early days we had envisaged that we will not invest anything in physical outlets or offices uh, so operationally very very really uh, human resource constitutes a big uh, component and then branding marketing and tech plays an important role speaking of human resource uh, can you tell us how do you go about uh, recruiting people because uh, i think in a very short span of time you have uh, grown massively as a company and uh, uh, recruiting so fast is not not that easy for any company so how do you go about it? for us um, our uh, learning uh, the core team founding team uh, including me vijay the learning that we have had in terms of uh, scaling up massive workforce related to financial inclusion in our earlier stint uh, the business that we managed we had to uh, have a similar situation where uh, we have to appoint people across the country various states where we have never worked before and that create a supervisory structure to manage the workforce so that has been our strength uh, so we used to get a mandate saying that uh, set up a um, uh, 2000 agent network with uh, 500 people in uh, six states we have successfully have been doing it so that's our dna our core competency now in this we had to um, have specialized people who uh, were having prior experience in handling uh, retail consumers mm -hmm. that's a key requirement it need not be because you won't get a workforce that is having prior experience in gold loan we do get some of the people from um, well known nbfcs banks uh, or some of the smaller um, uh, networks who uh, provide uh, uh, leads to banks from such an organization we get a small workforce related to gold loan experience but our prime the requirement was to look for young energetic team who have handled uh, retail consumers it could be for a insurance it could be for a financial product that they would have served that was a key requirement and we went ahead and uh, started looking for people with this background so we had our own regional recruiters and a national recruitment team we also uh, partnered with uh, some of the hiring uh, agencies who could give us the uh, resumes and then um based on success uh, uh, of hiring then there's a payout to them so we tried out combination of that as well as uh, trying out freshers so uh, we tried all the combinations and then every um, channel had to be expanded and whichever works fine then uh, you refine it and grow that path and whichever didn't work for example freshers Uh, didn't work for us because this product uh, very very complicated in office environment pressures may work when you put them in the field where there is no manager to guide them and then they have to go and pick the heat so that's not possible so that we had to course correct so we did as we grew we course corrected but majority of the workforce we have been able to hire to our own team mm -hmm. our own contacts that we have in the field we could get from uh, various industries that i explained to you what were uh, some of the biggest challenges uh, for you while uh, building and growing this venture see uh, uh building a, a a physical network uh, is thrilling at uh, challenging um uh, the biggest challenge was uh, still in majority of the country uh, gold loan taking gold loan has a social stigma okay people have their gold it's their asset rather than them going to a money lender or their own family uh, asking money which uh, is uh, not a good sign from a society point of view but then the society stigma is such that if somebody is pledging gold it is considered as not a good sign of mm -hmm. his financial stability are bivika gena girvi rakha so that stigma had to be broken and then we had to tell them you don't have to be defensive it's your asset that you are monetizing uh, so that was one of the biggest challenge educating people to use gold to their own advantage so that you don't have to go and ask money from anyone you have this asset with you 
and then uh, managing such a massive workforce uh, remotely mm -hmm. uh, without physical officers and every person uh, is a saiband officer in a city and there is no reporting manager that reporting manager is virtually from another city district headquarters uh, managing him how do we effectively manage it we built a tech stack so that everything that is happening in the field is available centrally at regional level uh, we wanted that to be in place from day one uh, because uh, managing it offline through whatsapp is not going to work in the long run so we have to have a platform of our own where we will be able to track see what is happening give all the information so even for the person to operate there it will help for their own productivity business so these challenges were there but then uh, i think uh, uh, these are challenges that we have to face and be prepared and overcome yeah that's true uh speaking of challenges uh, you know when you face challenges you also learn a lot of lessons so uh, what would you say are some of the top lessons that you have learned through your entrepreneurial journey and pre entrepreneurial journey where you were smi entrepreneur in your uh, job as well see uh, for me um, uh, the biggest lesson i would say from the previous uh, stint you see um, uh we should uh, one of the biggest lessons personally i have learned in the professional life is um, uh we should be prepared for surprises okay um uh, we should not complicate uh, uh too many things we should have a clear goal uh, and then be prepared for surprises but then believe in yourself your team is the biggest lesson uh, so you are as good as your team that's the biggest success mantra i would say plus uh, uh there should not be any emotional attachment uh, to whatever you have created you would have created with great passion but something didn't work then you should let it go and start afresh something new for me fortunately i have created successful businesses and then how do you give that up and create something from scratch because once you have put your heart and soul then it's uh, grown a successful business model then uh, will you wish to grow that further or you want to hold on to it or you want to give it up and try something new that i learned early part of my career and that's how uh, even this stint if you see uh, whatever i was handling uh, in my previous stint was a very successful business but to give up and uh, start something new so i would put uh, believing in yourself and your team is uh, most important then build a sustainable um, business uh, keeping um, um, value for all stakeholders to be created you are not creating business to sell or for a valuation purpose value will have to be created for our end consumer our promoters investors for every individual in the organization so that's what we should believe and we should never have a fear of failures hmm. and uh, this is my final question tell us what do, what do you uh, think is the meaning of entrepreneurship what would be your definition of uh, entrepreneur how would you define uh, the term entrepreneur or uh, what are the skill sets that may, makes an entrepreneur um see for me personally uh, entrepreneurship is building something where uh, you will touch somebody's life you will make some difference in somebody's life that's the whole goal uh, in return um, it will create value for you your own organization all stakeholders but then the fundamentally you are touching somebody's make a uh, life making their life better than what was there earlier that's been always my goal throughout my uh, professional life as well as now the entrepreneurial journey that we have your second question was uh, if you can repeat uh, you said uh, it's uh, required for sorry skill sets what skill sets make up i would say there is no ready made answer but then if i can put passion okay and commitment uh, never lose hope every day i wake up uh, by 4:30 okay uh, whatever happens previous day is forgotten and then i keep myself motivated with um, being fit i go out run for one hour do exercise and then you're back in office by 9 9:15 usually i am the first one 
uh, early one to come to the office and i stay late I enjoy my life uh, in the office is an extended family for me we uh, there's a great team great camaraderie that we have evening we all of us play games in the office table tennis chess uh, carrom so whatever makes everyone happy but i would say the culture of um, uh, passion where whatever you are doing you should be passionate and uh, committed to that that is one core i would say that's needed in every uh, leader got it well uh, on this note we have come to the closure of the session uh, thanks for joining us uh, mr rajesh it was a pleasure to have you on our platform and our best wishes for sai fun thank you it will be my pleasure uh, if uh, my learnings uh, will be of help to any budding uh, future entrepreneurs and uh, leaders thanks for giving us uh, giving me this opportunity thank you on behalf of sai bandhu thank you thank you rajesh have a good day yeah thanks bye